All right, guys, so this video is going to show you how to clean out your uh, Mila Blizzard CX-1 canister vacuum. It is a bagless vacuum from Mila. It's the first bagless vacuum Mila ever sold. Um, so this is gonna just kind of show you how to clean it out, um, how to deep clean it, and then how to just clean it uh, out after every time you vacuum, just kind of the bare minimum. Um, but the deep clean you should do every three to six months, depending on how often you vacuum. Um, there's not a bagless vacuum around that is that does not require intensive cleaning every two to you know six months or so. They all do, and the reason is because they don't have a bag to stop the dust from getting everywhere. Um, but a lot of people like bagless vacuums, and if you do, that's great. But uh, you probably you may not be aware of all the maintenance that's required in cleaning it out. Um, if you don't do this, you're going to lose airflow because your filters are going to get clogged. Um, it's going to potentially leak dust. Uh, it'll start smelling bad because all the bacteria it sucks up just stays there and starts to grow in odor and off gases, horrible odors, especially if you have dogs. It'll start to smell like a wet dog. Um, and then ultimately, that airflow restriction will shorten the life of the motor and you're not picking up as much dirt as you could be. Um, so there, there's a lot of advantages to cleaning it every three to six months, as you should. Um, if you don't clean it, the Mila has this uh, sensor in it that it'll be able to tell if the airflow is restricted too much. And that's gonna be because the, the, the Gore filter in here is clogged, which is the pre-motor filter. And it's gonna shut off and it's going to activate the comfort clean mode, which is going to turn the machine off for about 15 seconds on its own and then it's going to start tapping the filter. It's gonna sound like popcorn. Um, it'll uh, tap dirt off from the filter. It'll fall to the bottom of this cartridge and then it sh that should free up enough airflow for it to start getting air to the motor again. Um, if it doesn't do that, then it is really, really dirty. It needs to be cleaned. That tapping motion can only do so much. I was really excited about that feature when I first got it, but after using the machine, it doesn't clean it nearly as well as what uh, you can do with your hands. Um, just good old, you know, washing it and, what, and whatnot. So, um, so this is going to be how you clean it. So I'm going to start. Um, so if you've just finished vacuuming, what I like to do is to take an air compressor, and I will take the Gore filter out of the cartridge. And I will use an air compressor to blow it off. Um, and I'll put it back in here. I'll blow out the filter, the Gore filter as well. I'll put it back in its place. And then I will totally disassemble this uh, this component, the, the dust bin. I'll take this part out. I'll open it. And I'll take this component out. I'm not sure what it does. And uh, I'll use an air compressor, blow all these parts off, um, and then I'll just take a non-scratching uh, non rag or a sponge or something soft that won't scratch it and get it lightly damp and just kind of wipe out the inside of this. <clears throat> and may, uh, and so what's really important to clean are, are these seals. There are seals all around the machine. There are seals right here. You want to clean that seal. You want to wipe off uh, where the seal contacts. You want to clean off this seal. I usually have a lot of fur hidden up in here. You want to wipe these off. It's another area of the seal right here. Uh, this seal and the bottom right here. And then you want to wipe, wipe off the seal of the Gore filter, which is right there. These are all rubber pieces, some of them are plastic. Um, let's see. That's pretty easy, you know? And then, so after you're done and you put this component back in, which it just slides into these guiders right here. And then it just snaps into place. So after you're, you're, you're done doing that, uh, you wanna wipe off the bottom of this and the outside of this. Um, and that way, so when you put it back inside, the dirt does not fall off from the bottom of this into here. That, if you see dirt here, that may make you think that it's leaking dust, but it could not be. It could just be because you, there's dirt on here and dirt will get on the bottom of this when you dump it 
into the trash can. It'll fly up and get on here. Um, and then you want to put this bag, you just kind of drop it in, put your thumb on both sides, right there and right here, press it on the top left corner, and then press down on this side, just enough to where you feel like it's snug and in the place it's supposed to be. Um, I've noticed that this there are these uh, notches here, and I initially thought that this side piece was supposed to go all the way down these notches, but it's like, you're supposed to put it down, press it down to where it's not quite all the way to where you still have about a quarter of an inch of space left. Um, and that, that'll be properly seated. Sometimes you'll even hear it pop like it, like you just heard. And then that it's, that's the uh, correct way to do it. And then you just put it in. Um, and obviously if you want to, I recommend just wiping down the inside of this. Uh, even if, uh, like, in, in addition to the seals. So if you want to deep clean this, um, you'll sort of repeat the same process, but instead of just blowing it out, um, you take all of this apart. So I'll take this apart, take the handle down. You can even further break this component down like this. You just kind of pull it apart. Um, you take the screen off. pull this out. I could not figure out for the longest time how to pull out the screen because dirt gets caught behind it um, really, really bad. I'll dump this out, but there will still be a lot of crap under here. Uh, there's an area in the very bottom of it where it looks like you can put a slot screwdriver. I couldn't figure out how to do that without getting my hands down there, and I could not get my hands down there. But um, I found out that all you have to do is put your hand on this, your, your thumb on this tab, and then just pull out straight out. And it comes out very easily. I've never broken it. Um, so once you break all of this down like that, you just, you know, you just get a, a, a sponge or a non-scratching uh, uh, washcloth and just dish soap and water, scrub it, um, let it air dry uh, for 24 hours. I like to put this stuff in front of a fan because then it dries in like four, you know, three to five hours. Um, as far as the filter goes, Mila says this is washable, so what they want you to do when you wash it, only with cold water, do not use detergents in it or the detergent will dry um, in, in the filter and get caught in there. Um, so what they want you to do is you fill it on the top end with water on its side up until it's at the top to where its water is going to spill out of it if you add any more. And then you just start shaking it like this. And so, so you can do that a few times, and then uh, once you're done shaking it, you just open it and dump it out, repeat the process until the water comes out clear and clean. Um, so to take the gore filter out, there are these, there's an arrow on the lid, and then a lock and unlock position. To unlock it, you turn it counterclockwise and then just pull out. To, to lock it, excuse me, you just push it down um, with the arrow on the unlock position and then turn it clockwise to the locking position. Um, of course, after it's dried. <clears throat> now you can further break this down even more by separating this part from this part, but I've never done that. I've never needed to. Um, it always comes out just fine. So after all of these components are dry, you can put it back together. Um, Uh, one thing I've noticed is that when I spray the dustbin out, once there's soap and stuff in it, sometimes I'll see water trapped up in the top of this. There's like a hollow cavity right here. And the first time I did it, it kind of made me worry that it was going to get water moisture into the motor. But after I had let it set out for a day, the water was gone. So I'm not for sure how the water gets into there. It's probably through a seal or something, but uh, I would not worry about it. Just make sure you don't use it until all the water is visibly dried. And, and to the touch. Uh, so after the dust bin is put back together, you just put back this little handle thingy-majig back together. And when you put this back together, you want to make sure that this part is the, on the opposite side of this. So it's going to go like that. Oh, crap. I'm so clumsy. Extremely, extremely. Um, there we go. That's the proper way to have it set up or put together.
Um, and if you want, you can uh, pour some laundry scent beads into the bottom of this cartridge like I did. I'm sure you can see that. And uh, so when the air passes through the machine, when it exhausts, it smells like whatever scent you have in here. I like the Thai beads. Um, the other scents that I've tried just don't smell right. They smell weird, but the Thai beads and the off-brand gain scent smells really good. <clears throat> Some people like to do that, especially if they have pets or if they just have an odor in it and they can't get rid of it. Um, I just like things to smell good. It just makes it even a little bit more enjoyable to vacuum. So after all of that is completed, uh, this is where you just put this back in correctly. Now this is where if you don't do it correctly, it will leak dust potentially. Um, so there's two things that can make this leak dust. If you don't close this correctly, uh, the seal will not seat properly and it'll leak dust from the back of here. So you have to make sure that, that you do that right. And another thing is some people have issues with these, uh, let these uh, latches breaking. Mila, when I bought this, Mila was not selling this part, but uh, now you can buy the latch separately if you break this. Um, but a good way to not break it is to just gently close it. I mean, it's a thousand dollar machine. You don't want to just like slam it up there. Uh, so you just pull this back, this the latch, and then close it with your, 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 your other finger and then just let go of the latch. Or you can use your fingernail to pull it over. Um, and you can kind of see really closely uh, the teeth. There's like these grooves in, in the latch where it attaches uh, to this component. And sometimes it's not in all the way, and sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not latched all the way. Sometimes it's not pushed up all the way. So you want to make sure that that's properly seated and properly shut, and the latch is fully uh, moved as far uh, to the right as it will go. And the other thing that can make it leak is if you don't put this back in correctly. Um, even if you take this out, every time I would, you take it out, or your kids do, or your wife or husband does, uh, this can kind of jiggle loose. So if you put this back in the proper way, you just kind of have to let it drop in there like that with the, uh, the handle sticking up. And you take your left thumb, put it right here, your right thumb right there, you push down on the on your left thumb, and then on the right side, you push down until it feels like it's seated into uh, the position it's supposed to be in. I've noticed that these there are these grooves. Um, and I did mention this a little bit ago, but if you're just now getting here watching this or didn't get it the last time, make sure that this edge piece does not go all the way to the bottom of these grooves. You need to leave about a quarter of an inch of space left. So watch me do it again. All upper left hand corner. And I felt it push in as far as it will go. And on the right side, I'm just gonna push it in just two until it feels like it's in an even position. Yep, and it's about a quarter of an inch off the, the uh, where it's supposed to be. I mean, sorry, a quarter of an inch of space is left between uh, the black piece and the, the bottom of the grooves. I'm gonna see if you can get that close shot. So there are the grooves, if you can see them up close. Um, so you, you wanna make sure that that's not pushed in all the way. And that's about it, so. Um, That's it for the dust bin and the gore filter. The other thing you want to do when you deep clean it is if you have an air compressor, blow this out. You know, you can clean the attachments with soap and water and when you clean the dust bin components, uh, I mean, the dust bin, sorry. Um, and then you can wipe it out with just like Windex. I like the automotive car cleaning products because they're kind of like a multi-purpose. Uh, they leave a gloss, they leave conditioner, they clean well, they dry quickly. <clears throat> Um, and just obviously make sure that the seals are wiped down as well. Uh, so once all of that is done and dry, then you can put it back together. The gore filter just slides into its little home. And um, you turn the lever all the way to the left until you feel some resistance and then you just snap it into place like that. And 
Mm. It dusts in, just slides down. Gent do this like gently and slowly. Don't uh, brush it, or you can break the little clips that hold it in. And just slide it into its little place like that. So that's about it for cleaning this machine. Uh, it, I always like to wipe down the outside of it as well, um, just to kind of keep it clean and looking good. Make sure that when you clean the top of this that you don't spray your cleaner directly on the unit because it can seep down into the electrical areas and uh, short circuit some of that stuff. So just spray it onto the rag first and then wipe it down. Now as far as your power nozzle goes, um, some vacuums have removable brush rolls, this one does not. Uh, but what Mila does give you are these lines. Um, there's like these little indentations where you can run scissors or a knife along here and it'll cut the cut the hair or whatever is wrapped up in there and there's a line on both sides of the brush roll. Um, so you do that on both sides and you can either pick it off or suck it up into the vacuum after that. And then you just want to grab the hoses and the wand and look through them and make sure there's like, you know, no clogs or anything. Um, and then at that point, it's probably good to go and you can reassemble it. And that's, uh, that's pretty much how to take care of these. Um, so if you ever want to replace the gore filter in it, you have to buy this whole cartridge with the filter together and it's about a hundred dollars directly from Mila. I've checked prices on other websites like Amazon. I can't find it anywhere else. Uh, I, I've only been able to find it on Amazon. It's like a hundred, hundred and three, hundred and five dollars American dollars US. <clears throat> uh, and an another thing I want to mention is this is not the HEPA filter. This is a gore filter. Uh, it works very, very well. I don't see any dust building up um, behind it like back here. But it's not the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter on these machines is actually internal to the unit. Um, they are not replaceable by the user. But they, uh, the HEPA filter is kind of right here inside the motor casing. This is where the dust will pass through, or I mean, uh, the air will pass or exit the machine. Uh, but the HEPA filter in here is supposed to be a lifetime filter, um, so it's never meant to be replaced. If it does ever develop an odor, like if you do this really, this deep clean process, like I just talked about um, with the water and the soap and all that, wipe it down, and it still smells, and you've checked your power nozzle and your wand and everything for blockages, and it still smells, then you might need to get a new HEPA filter. But the Gore filter catches most, 99.99% .99 of everything that comes through this machine. You'd more likely need to be need to replace the the gore filter, and the reason why I say that is because like if you have pets, pet dander is like dead skin uh, from from dogs or cats, and like especially from dogs, it has like an oily substance on it. So when you wash this with uh, cold water, uh, it's water resistant, so it's going to stay in in the filter. Um, it's it's never going to come out, so it might still smell uh, like a wet dog after you've cleaned it. Um, another thing is that after you've washed this uh, a filter so many times, it starts to break down the fiber itself. Um, there's a lot of minerals in, in water that will get caught in the fiber of the material and then uh, clog it over time. Um, and then at some point you'll, you'll, you'll have reduced suction or it'll smell bad or it just cleaning it isn't doing the job isn't cutting it for you, that's when you want to replace it. Uh, but Mila at least does sell them on the Mila website. I would say you shouldn't have to replace these, but I, I mean, every five years or so, um, every three to five years if you maintain it, uh, if, you do, if, you get, if you let it get super, super dirty, no amount of cleaning it's gonna fix that. So at that point, you're gonna need to replace it. If it's super discolored, even after you've washed it, if it smells bad, if it's torn, if it's frayed, um, if it's lost its shape, misshapen in certain areas, uh, 
or you notice a major drop in suction even after you've, you've cleaned it and it's just not cleaning like it used to, that's what you're going to have to replace. And that does happen at some point on bagless vacuums. Actually, all vacuums, but, but you know, bagless vacuums especially. Um, so there's a lot involved with bagless machines, even with the Nila bagless machine. Um, but if you do, if you put the work in, it does give you Mila performance and that Mila uh, cleaning ability. This is the quietest vacuum I've ever had. It is very powerful. Um, it really pulls on the carpet and rugs. It cleans fur very, very, very well. I haven't had allergy issues since owning Mila products and I grew up with allergy issues, horrible issues. And they have really improved my life. I have horrible allergy issues, usually, at least like eight months out of the year, but ever since owning this and my other Mila vacuum, I haven't had any problems. So it's made a pretty big difference in my life, and it's super, super easy to use compared to other vacuums I have and have had. Um, it takes no time, like if I'm vacuuming the, the carpet in the living room, to just, you know, lift the power nozzle up on the couch and get the fur off of the couch, or take the wand out of the power head for two seconds to clean up the, you know, fur in some corner and then put it back in the power nozzle. It takes no time. Um, and I've owned this for probably two years. And in that two years, it has never felt like it wasn't a new machine. It has always held up. Nothing feels loose on it yet. I vacuum with it very, very frequently. I use all the attachments and it still feels, looks like, runs like, smells like a brand new machine. Um, Part of that's because of the maintenance I put into it. Um, but it, th these machines are definitely capable of being used heavily as long as they're uh, maintained. Um, I still prefer my bag unit though. I have a bag Mila C3. Um, it doesn't take any of this intensive cleaning every three to six months. All I have to do is put a new bag in it, you know, every month or two, and it, that takes like five seconds. Um, I gotta replace the filter in it like every six months to a year. Um, but it takes two seconds. It's a lot easier to, to maintain compared to this, but they both still do a really, really good job. Um, I feel like this is a underestimated, underrepresented vacuum that a lot of vacuum people hate. A lot of people that buy it don't like it. I just think they don't understand how to use it or how to clean it. Um, this is like a brand new machine every time I clean it. Anyway, so after you get done cleaning that out, all you gotta do is reassemble it. So I actually have two power nozzles for this. This is the SCB-236, and this is the SCB-228. So basically, this one has a headlight, a rubber bumper, and a lower profile. They can get under lower furniture. It's a little bit quieter than the bigger one. Um, I prefer how this one feels to use. It just glides. It just makes a good sound. I don't know. It just feels really good to use. It leaves really nice marks, uh, carpet lines. Um, it picks up really, really, really well. This is one of those power nozzles where it only takes one pass to pick stuff up. Um, this one, though, is a little bit cheaper. Uh, it does not have the bumper, does not have a headlight. It has a bulkier, like, taller power nozzle, so the furniture it can get under can't be as low as it can be with the other one. Uh, it does seem to have slightly better agitation because this power nozzle will pull itself uh, but it tends to just not, I just tend to enjoy using the other one more. This one came on my other Mila. Although I have had issues with this pedal. If like on this power nozzle, if you get it with your Blizzard or whatever Mila, you have to press on the inner side of the handle release pedal, like on that very corner right here, and then recline it before pulling it backwards. Um, or it'll snap and it'll start sticking. Like if you feel like you have to force it, don't do it. Don't press down on this side. My Mila dealership or dealer told me that if you start using this side, it'll break the whatever mechanism reclines this. You have to fully press down the inner side first before you even begin to start pulling it backwards. Now if you do it that way, it'll last you forever. If you do it the, the wrong way, it'll break within six months or a year. So I had broken mine like that but ever since uh, he fixed it and I've been doing it the right way, which has been for years, it has not broken at all. It still works just fine. 
Um, no dust leaks either. So uh, after all of that, I just put it together. Um, I like to kind of check this intake area for any dirt and whatnot and wipe it out just a little bit. Um, and this just obviously hooks up to the, the intake. And this hooks up up top. And that's it guys, this is the Needle Blizzard, how to deep clean it. Um, please like my video if you enjoyed it or found it valuable. Um, so if you want to see a much more in-depth uh, how to clean video, I've made three separate videos on how to clean this, part one, part two, and part three, of me actually cleaning it. Uh, it's much more detailed. So if you had questions about cleaning it that were not answered in this video, it'll pro they'll probably be answered in the, the three-part uh, video series of me cleaning this. So if you do the three videos, there are those other three videos. Part one's gonna be about me taking it apart, using an air compressor, how to blow it out, gonna prepare it for the deep clean. Part two is me washing it out and drying the parts, and part three is me uh, reassembling the machine and wiping down the main body and checking the brush roll and power nozzle for obstructions and whatnot. So that'll be like the final step video. Um, <clears throat> And it'll go into a lot more detail about how to handle these parts, uh, how to put it back together, um, the do's and don'ts, etc. So if, if you uh, want to learn more about all that, just go check those, uh, those videos out, and I will have them uploaded on my channel as well, in addition to this one. Uh, thank you.